Welcome to another DuckTales 2017 review. I'm John Barry, and today I'm reviewing The Ballad of Duke Baloney, the third episode of the second season of the DuckTales reboot series from 2017, which is actually pretty long way to describe it. So to begin with, I want to apologize for this re review being about three weeks late. I've been busy with school, and to be honest, I still am. So this review is largely unscripted. Parts of, parts of it have been scripted, but the rest has not been. So I will read what I have scripted and then just improv the rest. I will release what has been scripted exclusively to my patrons on Patreon, as I do with my complete scripts, that way they can still see what I had scripted. But before I continue, if you find yourself enjoying this review at any time, please leave a like. Also, to stay up to date on all my non-YouTube stuff, consider following me on Twitter or Facebook. You can also check out my website. Links are in the description. Now, my question for you today is, what did you think of DuckTales, The Ballad of Duke Baloney? Let me know your answer in the comments. Now, back to the review. To begin with, this episode I found extremely compelling. Not only did it deal with something that was caused by the events of the season 1 finale, the, cha the episode was called The Shadow War in case you don't remember, but it also brought in some interesting character, I would say history not necessarily development, but definitely history for one Flintot Glomgold. The part of this episode, as I alluded to in my previous sentence, deals with what happened to Flintheart Glomgold after the events of the Shadow War. What basically happens is he loses his memory, reverts to his spoilers I should say, reverts to his childhood identity or childhood name and lives the life of a fisherman until he gets hit on the head, his head again and he remembers his memory. That's essentially what happens in the episode, but this I like how when he doesn't remember who he was, but the McDuck Industries fishing boat he has an extreme hatred from, but he just doesn't know why, which is his subconscious telling them that he hates Scrooge McDuck, which I found that just totally funny. Kind of, that was funny. Then of course there was also that one dream sequence, and well, that actually really, I w it was very surreal, like a dream. And I wouldn't want to say it was funny or weird, but it was more the funny weird rather than the funny funny type. But also at the same time, it's like, he needs some serious mental health. Duke Bologna, should I say, Flintham Glomgo, because as a child in South Africa, I believe, his name was Duke Bologna until he met Scrooge McDuck. And... And became mad at Scrooge, which I just love that introduction of that history for him. Which, you know, he's not really, Flintard Glumgold is not really Scottish, but wants to be basically better at everything than Scrooge, so he wants to be even better at being Scottish than Scrooge McDuck, which I just found funny. But the event that, that, um, essentially makes, turns Duke Baloney into Flintard, Pers the persona was kind of always there, but, um, so Scrooge, you know, on some adventure, met up with, uh, not met up, but had Duke Baloney shine his, sh his spats, not nice his spats, and instead of, you know, paying him the, the normal amount, he decided to give him a dime to teach him the same lesson that he learned, which would have worked if, if he had not already pulled out his wad of money. If he had not done that, then he pro the lesson probably would have been learned. So Scrooge created his like biggest business enemy, which is kind of ironic, kind of funny, but I would say more it's um situ it's more um dramatic irony I think is the term I'm looking for. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. But the idea of you create your own enemy it's always a neat way when they do it in the show, you know, or in any media, and how they do it is, I think, the more important part. Not that they do it, but how they do it. 
I kind of like uh, how here it's Scrooge trying to teach the young Flintheart, Duke Baloney, the same lesson that he, Scrooge himself learned as a child, that you need to work hard in order to get ahead. However, that did not work. Duke Baloney becomes mad and steals the wad of cash in the money clip that Scrooge had. And then fashions the Flintheart Glumgard identity to try to outdo Scrooge at every turn. Which is, pre which is I, the word I'm looking for, which is kind of a more interesting way of doing it. It's sometimes, you know, the, no, like the Incredibles, uh, Mr. Incredible created Syndrome by essentially not, uh, by essentially looking out for Syndrome, Buddy, his real name Buddy, I guess was, actual s personal interest, his own safety. And here it's more, it's Scrooge trying to impart a lesson, not necessarily to keep Duke Baloney safe, but to impart a lesson. And those are the two examples I can think of off the top of my head, but both serve their, their purposes in their respective films in different ways. And then of course, that dream sequence I did mention earlier, you know, you could easily see the, the glam gold identity in their own, you know, like trying to be suppressed by the same time trying to come out, which is kind of interesting. And then of course how, how um, Scrooge said that as Duke Baloney in the in after Duke Baloney's front heart forgot himself, how as Duke Baloney front heart was happier, which is kind of like kind of makes you think good thing. Kind of you wish that he hadn't recovered his memories, but at the same time, is it fair for him to forget? It's kind of an interesting mo little mo dilemma, but Scrooge kind of answers, he's happier than he's ever been. And in a way, that's, you know, one, a okayish reason to, rem to not help somebody remember their identity, and as we can learn, in a way, Flint Heart, re you know, was restored to his pre-meeting -Scroo pre Scrooge McDuck self. So yeah, it's, there's a lot of ways you can look at it, but it definitely brings up some interesting concepts. And then of course this episode also saw Webby and Louie as the main kids in the episodes. Another pairing that you don't see too often either. Same in the Depths of Cousin Fred where we had Hugh and Dewey. Some pairings, pairings of the kids that we really just don't see that often. But yeah. Um, where was I going to say, but yeah, it was kind of interesting, and, and like, Webby wanted to discover what was going on, and it was like, eh, I don't care, which is very fitting in their respective personalities, and storytelling-wise, that pairing works. You have the one who wants to find out, and the one who doesn't, want, doesn't care. If you put in Dewey or Louie there, I mean not Dewey, Dewey or Huey, they probably would be with Webby and trying to figure this stuff out. Like, Dewey and Webby, you know, with the big season one arc, finding what happened to Dollar Duck, that point work because you had one who wants to uncover the mysteries of the Duck family, and the other wants to figure out what happened to his mother. Kind of, you know, some good pairings there. Their goals correspond, but they're doing it for slightly different reasons. And here we get the the contrasting ca type of pairing, which is really nice to see as well. Those contrasts, because they, they help highlight the different character aspects, but also at times show, show different things about the characters. But really, this episode is all about Flint Hump Glomgold. And it's also interesting how his company was doing so much better once he disappeared. It's like, yeah, he should have just... And he was doing much better as a fisherman. It's like, if the episode did not happen, ev everyone would have been better off, which is kind of funny what happened there, and when he does recover his memory, the funny part is not the funny ha-ha, but the funny like, oh man, kind of funny, like, really? It's like, the, you force yourself to laugh, to deal with the situation, that type of funny? It's, does, does that make sense? But it really does show show you that Flintheart is not a good businessman, because he's out for petty revenge and just wants to outdo Scrooge McDuck at every angle. And then of course he convinces Scrooge, like no, whoever is the richest duck at the end of the year, or in a year, gets the other one's company. And Scrooge agrees to that, and man, 
Scrooge sh should have been smarter. See, his his morals, I could, you can see his strive to be honest all the time and s basically to be and and not back down from a challenge, especially when a the child is especially when the challenger has been has you know deceived him or under uh, <coughs> sorry or have you know somehow been un uh, ha, you know deceived him or or cheated him or just cheated in general. That's I think when really Scrooge is like car you no know, pussies of cards on, on the table or time to get serious kind of thing. And to prove that honesty is better. Which is of course always a good thing, but at the same time his strive to be to essentially earn his money square and smart and basically be an honest businessman while yes penny pinching but honest you can say and earn his money honestly has in a way can be hindrance businessly and decision wise if you get suckered into competing against someone who's going to cheat and in a, and in a very dangerous competition but I have a feeling I know why that Scrooge probably will win, but I expect to see lots of underhanded tricks by Glomgo to outdo, like some of his more um, crazy stunts from the original series, some of them could be pulled in. But um, that's enough speculation on my part. I got two more episodes before I catch up, see episode 4 and 5, but you know what? <laughs> Don't expect them to hit for about two weeks until I'm done with school, so this is. I'm just glad I got this episode r reviews done finally. But before I go on to my concluding thoughts, this episode is help made possible by my patrons on Patreon. Patreon is a platform that allows fans to directly support their favorite creators. By supporting me on Patreon for as low as a dollar per month, not only are you supporting me and allowing me to create new and better content, but you also will get access to all my scripts, my bloopers, and any other cut content from my channel as well as additional rewards at higher tiers. So I have decided I'm just going to conclude this video, this review with this remark, this statement. Yes. This episode, The Ballad of Duke Bologna, was a very excellent look at the character of Fintot Glomgold and how he came about and also how really I d what do I want to say I said so much already so maybe I should just cut off here but I really feel like I should say something profound and you know what my profound statement would be sometimes the ending does not have to be profound just has to be interesting just like how the episode ended introducing an interesting and maybe profound concept but Definitely will create some interesting storytelling devices and let's say just interesting stories later on. So thank you for watching this video. So thank you for watching my latest video. New videos come out every week so consider subscribing and turning notifications on so you can actually be notified when I release new content because apparently you have to ring the bell for YouTube to know you want to re receive notifications about when the channel uploads content. Feel free to check out the video or the playlist on the screen now and lastly, have a good day, a good night, wherever you are, have a good one.